Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we rebranded the background. So at least now it's brighter. So I believe that um, it's part of um, just trying to do improvement in this. I was supposed today, and oh, I need to mention, uh, this was branded for me courtesy of Mary Wanjiru Mugure all the way from United States of America, Asante Sana. <laughs> she just came and said, Kevin, I'm going to design it for you. And I want to say thank you for that support. Now, uh, today I was supposed to give an update on um, Sarah Tieno's fundraiser. And better part of afternoon, of the afternoon, I was in Kenyatta Hospital. So, uh, of course, because of time, I could not finish the process. So I will go back tomorrow and finish everything, making that payment, so that by tomorrow I think I shall have, uh, I shall receive all uh, the documentations that are needed, so that I can come here and present for you what exactly we have gathered and um, the situation, or rather, where the fundraiser has reached. I want to still say thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for supporting. Thank you, guys. Today was the last day. Actually, the, the videos that I'm going to do today, the last day of the 21 days challenge. So you can still forward um, and we really appreciate your support. Now, if you have been keen, you realize that the diplomats have been trooping in this country um, in their numbers to meet President Uhuru Kenyatta, the president-elect William Samuel Ruto, and Raila Molodinga. And I think one that was captured was a delegation from US senator um, who came in the country. And yesterday there was also another delegation from Switzerland and Germany. And they came just after the Kenyan elections. Some have been delegations from the development partners, that is the, the UN, the AU, and all that. So if we had a free and fair election, as many people have been made to understand of how the way other people tend to believe so, then why do you think what is triggering all these um, concentrated activities by the diplomats in the country? And this is not a welcome call for Deputy President William Samuel Ruto, or rather let me say the President next. Because what he would actually want is a situation where he's given the opportunity and the freedom, everything. He can organize his government and eat everything by himself. But when the international community tries to come in the country to just figure out what's happening and how they can also create a truce, it creates an, a working environment where the president-elect have to work with other players in the field. And this is not something that really uh, Deputy President wants. I am one person that believe, and you can challenge me on this, that the handshake between Rail Odinga and President Uhuru Kenyatta was just beyond taking the two leaders and locking them in a house and making them talk. Maybe they have made us to believe they talked for months, for almost a month for them to reach an agreement. I can say my position is there were really high profile powers that brokered that deal. And the handshake was not just about President Huru Kenyatta. It had its own firewalls. Because the truth of the matter, just like after the 2017 general election, even after this election, the country is split. People are hurt. And there are people who can't just understand or they can't just take it that Trey Lodinga is not the president-elect. So even if you look at the gap, it's 200,000 votes. So the truth of the matter here is there needs to be a situation. This, this, this activities by these foreign diplomats in the country is something that have subjective. Many people might wonder what exactly is going on. But I can say this that Kenya, whatever is happening or whatever people are consuming in the TV screens 
and are reading in the newspapers. That is what the public needs to consume. But there is just a lot that happen behind the scenes. Kenya, this Kenyan election is not just a, a, a shallow process of just going to get a president elect where you go and run your staff, get it and things move on. When it comes to about forming a government, I can tell you guys that you, when you talk to people, you will be told that this is just beyond going to elections and electing someone and someone runs, celebrates, president elect and that then things come to certain. It's not as easy as A, B, C, D because there is a lot that comes into play. Let me just remind you. United, UNEP, uh, United Nations Environmental Program, UN Habitat, my former employer, United Nations Office of Nairobi, that is UNON, and many, I think, around six of these organizations that are under UN, their headquarters are here in Nairobi, in Gegiri. I know the headquarter, the African headquarter for UN Habitat is here in Guru, in Gigiri. For UNEP is here in Nairobi. And you can add as many people who are in that industry will really tell you that Africa or Kenya is an integral player in Africa's development map. And everyone who targets every development partner, every investor who is looking at investing in Africa looks at Kenya. And that is why this country, I want to believe by people that this country cannot just be managed and handled casually. It is not as casual as people look for it. I see politicians senior politicians crying out, oh, the president doesn't want to cede power. I think it's, there is, and that is why I analyzed in one of my analyses, I think yesterday, that I see people who are in the dark, people who seem not to understand what exactly is happening. Remember, Kenya Airways launched their first maiden trip to USA less than one year ago. And they've just been a lot. These are integral Equity is struggling to establish, is, is trying to expand its market to, um, to DRC Congo. And, and you can see the way Kenya is, an, is, is the gate, is the entrance to the African market. This is something that only few people will actually want to understand, but that is the truth. And you cannot underestimate that. Now, what do you think is motivating these diplomats who are trooping in the country, or what is inside their diary? What are they coming? I can, I have to tell you first, their presence here is not something that William Ruto wants to see. Honestly, to say the truth, the president-elect is not more of a pan-African. <laughs> the person with the international footprints and network is Honorable Raila Molodinga. Or let me say his excellence, Raila Molodinga. So you cannot, uh, you cannot underestimate the activities of these diplomats that are coming in the country. These are very high profile uh, meeting, high table meetings that are touching on this. So guys, what are you seeing? I want to tell me, why do you think, is it by coincidence that US delegation came, German delegation is here, there is a delegation from Switzerland, uh, Sweden is also here. Uh, development partners and all over. And today I was I was in Kenyatta Hospital. By the way, I need to say thank you, Sana, for the welcome. I am great. But when I arrived there, of course, I could get support system because people knew <laughs> that we have been doing this. So some of our subscribers work there. I should not mention names. So guys, this is something that you cannot underestimate. Now, kindly subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell and like our video. I want to sit here and say thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the two videos today are the ones that we are doing mentions for um, Sarah's medical challenge. Uh, fundraiser is still going on. Tomorrow I'm going to give a report. Yeah, but you can still contribute um, as we wait for when I do finish up everything. I'll come back here and produce a video and just to explain in details and show with the payment what has been done. Now, 
Deputy President William Samuel Ruto's direction at Campaign Trail was pointing towards the West. And this West, if you have been keen, someone can help me fact check. I think I saw a tweet that the Russian president congratulated <laughs> congratulated uh, William Ruto for being announced as the president-elect. Let me just take you some time back. Uh, during COVID, when there was the jab that was being introduced to the country, William Ruto was on the receiving end because he decided to take a jab from, I think, Russia. I, I can't remember which one was that. But you remember, everyone from government was taking one that I think was from UK or some country, I think India, but Ruto went west. And that seemed, he was actually bashed as a person who was not in conformity with the government stand. Now, in the campaign trail, there have been uh, the disdain towards the president's direction because the president went east. The president went China way. And I remember when I analyzed here, when in one of the economic forums, they mentioned that we will put all these Chinese in tree and take them back. We'll chase the ones who are doing some small businesses here. And I say this will be understood in different contexts. So what is happening here? I think there is an international grab opportunity. There is a lot of international interest on the next regime because the president have invested a lot and have a lot of strong ties with the China. They've been, they constructed uh, uh, the, the thicker super, the thicker super highway was contracted by them. Uh, the ex Nairobi Expressway, uh, the Dongokundu project in Mombasa, there is um, there is the, the the standard gauge railway, and and so remember the whole hula balo about the debt. So these are issues that are coming, and I think it is creating a bit of that friction. People are saying, "Oh, maybe President Elect will be going west, so let's come." Just trying to test the waters. Number two, Ruto's threat to review Uhuru's by policies in the manifesto. Remember the conversation about forming, I don't know, quasi-judicial team to review what the president had done, some policies. One of those policies that can be reviewed is foreign policy. And yes, if Ben Kin realized that uh, the president-elect Kenya Kwanzaa's foreign policy have been opaque, <laughs> if I allow me to use that word, it has been opaque, it's not been so clear. And the president, Uhuru Kenyatta, made many foreign trips. I remember there was a budget that was showing that the president, the executive budget, really went into the foreign trips. And these foreign trips were mostly for bilateral ties. These are very keen because they have impact on investment opportunities in Kenya. The many treaties that have been signed. I remember a week to the general election, there was a pressure, uh, there was a call by Justin Muturi to recall the parliament so that they could pass a, a cooperation deal of between UK and Kenya on, on something on uh, on, KD of, on 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 defense. So I think it was UK. It is it was Kenya and UK. So these are issues that are on table, and there are a lot of stuff that cannot just be left bare open. It they must be there's some loose ends that must be tied. I also see, and that is my punchline: when William Root doesn't want these wazungus in this country. They don't want them because, and, and it's appreciated that handshake is becoming a tradition and it's, it's handshake tradition is becoming a model of ending our political uh, turmoil. However, that model is not appreciated or rather is not acknowledged by Kenya Kwanza team. To be specific, William Samiruta. So these foreigners... I think they are trying to use that model because it is something that has been, it's, it's one of its kind in Africa. They're trying to get a political truce between William Ruto and Ray Lodinga. However, the point of departure is, whereas the president-elect William Ruto would want an end to uh, uh, the push and pull, and he'd be given a ride so that Ray takes up an opposition lead, opposition position, However, Rai Lodinga insists that our judicial process must continue. Um, we must take a judicial process and maybe the legitimate winner so that justice is served. 
This is where there's a point of departure. And people just fear anything like this can happen. Remember, Kenya is in the international radar because we we once missed, I want to say we once did a very big mistake 15 years ago. And these fellas, William Samui Ruto and President now, William, or President Huru Kenyatta, were once culprits at ICC. So we cannot just be left that way. That's where there is a lot of prescription that is coming from the foreigners. Continuity of development projects might be key. Uh, President Uru Kenyatta had some plans on malaria that are being implemented, and the government have offered very good opportunity for these development partners and projects to thrive in the country. They are also now assessing, because at this moment, there are a lot of fundraising. There is a lot of fundraising that are being done maybe to support these projects. No one is coming to establish and even put up a project here if there are few problems that are emerging, remember the Kenyatta University land tussle, where WHO was supposed to build a hub in that land, but then the, the executive and the council of the school were in some sort of a war, even though the government were in a position to get the land, and it, it was given for that. So I see also development partners looking at this critically. And the big question is, is William Ruto fit? What are his policies? Can he? Should we embrace Raila? And I can tell you that's why we see most of them are saying that let Raila go to court. They're not talking. No one has told Raila concede defeat and have one. No, no, no. It's about let the process go on, but then there is need for peace. Guys, that's my bold.